Would you believe that this guy can French braid? I yeah. I probably would believe that. <laughs> you would? Yeah. Do you want to try? Yeah, I could try. Oh man, I'm I'm like nervous. Moment, yeah, moment of truth here. All right, all right. All right. Well, and then after you after I do this, you have to rate it out of ten. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Look at you! Oh my gosh, Adam! Oh my God, look! <laughs> Here I am on the Beer Mile podcast. And this is this is a good look. I'm feeling, I'm feeling fast. I'm feeling confident. Yeah, fast made Friday. <laughs> so so between all of these things, dabbling and modeling, like you're obviously you're gorgeous. Do you feel like you, <laughs> you. have won the genetic lottery? And how much of your career do you attribute to luck mm. versus skill? Oh, even when I was was modeling in high school, I was acutely aware of like the only reason they want me for this is because, you know, somehow my mom, and my dad met and then like they made me. I have nothing to do with that. And not that modeling is like it has some skill. You have to like practice at it. But uh, so much of it was ju I just felt like was just luck mm -hmm. versus um, running. I could really feel like accomplished when I did something like even now I do a, a hard workout and you, know, you just get that feeling of like, heck, yeah, I crushed that. Like that Definitely. was all me. I would put a bet out there that the only person on my only woman on my team who could beat me in a beer mile would be Shelby. Teresa said that she thinks she could be OK at it, but she was yeah, she was all about to drink fast enough. Ooh, ooh, hey, <laughs> Carissa, if you're if you're listening to this, <laughs> <laughs> it's on, Carissa, <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Even there's people on my team who just don't they just want to run, eat, sleep, mm -hmm. run, and play video games and run, eat, sleep. Like that is what. Well, you don't know. give Centro too much shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what, and Centro he, will respond he to us. He's yeah, called out. He, he connects with his fans actually really he, well he in his, in his, in his own, own way. way. In yep, his own yep, way. Yep. All right. Welcome back to the Beer Mile podcast. We are recording the intro and the outro. I would say live because it just sounds right to say we're recording live, but well, obviously we're recording live. Um, we're recording in Buffalo Park in Flagstaff. Uh, now that we got a sweet setup for our recording gear, uh, we're able to record outside with very minimal background noise. It sounds good. Well, hopefully it sounds good. Let us know if it doesn't. Um, but decided to record, enjoy some nature. You got the mountains in the background. This is a big hub for, for runners to come and train. And yeah, we wanted to check it out. It's our first time in the park. So hope you enjoy some, some nature scenery while yeah. we intro this episode of the podcast. Today on the show marks two dogs that have ever been on the Beer Mile podcast. We're joined by Colleen Quigley of Bowerman Track Club and her dog, Pi. Yeah, we socially distanced from her, but met her in a park outside in uh, Flagstaff area. And yeah, it was great to catch up with her, see how things are going here at her altitude camp in Flagstaff, as well as uh, you'll just have to watch to see. We give her some presents at first. Well, we give her one present, we give Pi a present because, you know, dogs more. dogs always more important. Um, so we give some presents. Uh, Adam also may or may not have showed off one of his hidden talents, I guess you could say. Oh, um, it is a hidden talent. It's a yeah. hidden talent. That's actually one of the, like when you do an icebreaker and someone's like, you What's know, two truths and a lie or like a fun fact. That should be, should I, be I've never fact. considered that my hidden um, talent, but yeah, that's a good idea. So we'll, I mean, we'll just say it now because you're still going to want to listen ahead or watch ahead I, to see I it I participate anyway, in Fast Braid Friday. Yep. Uh, obviously not with either of our hair, but uh, I show off my skills. And yeah, let me let me know, rate my braid out of 10. Absolutely, yeah. Taking the Fast Braid Friday to, to the Beer Mile podcast, doing that little collab action, and uh, Adam showing off his skills. You went, not many guys can can braid, I would I would guess, at least that's my guess, and Adam happens to be one of them. So, and, he, and he's never had long hair himself, so even more impressive. Yeah, definitely. We talk, uh, besides Fast Braid Friday, we talk about Obviously, her training here at Altitude, talk about her goals over the next year, her career in running, a bunch of other random stuff uh, as, as we do, but uh, yeah. I think definitely interesting and you won't want to miss it. Another cool thing, we got our first ever message on Anchor uh, for the podcast. So listeners, you can leave us a question, a comment, anything voice message, and we will splice it in and include it in the podcast. We had our first ever one. Thank you, Matt from Chicago because you were the first person to leave a message. Uh, I already sent it to him, sent him uh, some Beer Mile swag of his choice. So thanks for doing that. Uh, I'll post the link here if you're watching on, on YouTube. You can see the link on your screen now, anchor.fm slash beer-mile-media. 
Um, if you're listening to the audio version, take a look at the description. There's a link to it there. But yeah, if you want to be a part of the show, leave us a comment or a question. We love to splice it in. So let's get right to it. So Matt from Chicago had this to say. Hi, this is Matt from Chicago. I was wondering what is the best way to not get in trouble while running a beer mile on a public track? I saw Chris's beer two mile with a lot of people around. Does no one yell at you for drinking in public? Thanks. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough question. I feel like that's pretty typical. Um, obviously, we don't really, we can't really go on the record condoning uh, public yeah. uh, intoxication or anything like that. Yep. Um, yeah. So I guess there, there's a couple options, right? Like if you have uh, any private space that you or somebody you know owns, you can definitely do a beer mile on that. So like one example is in Chicago, Goose Island has some some private land. I don't think they've done a beer mile, but like. Yeah, yeah. But they, uh, yeah, they have, if you could get a place to, to agree. But then again, then again, that's like an organized event. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, the reality is, you know, it's illegal on most, if not, well, not all tracks necessarily, but most, most, uh, if you're, especially if you're going to a school, illegal, public track, probably illegal, um, in Chicago it is, but yeah, so Adam and I have done a number of, uh, number of events on a special track in Chicago, uh, as you well, may or may we, not have seen. Well, do we plug it? Do we I'm, plug? I mean, we might, we might as well. You know, the home track, we gotta, we gotta go out and say it. Montrose Lakefront track in Chicago, uh, kind of in the Lakeview Uptown area, right on the right on the lake. Yeah, it's a great track. If you've been watching our videos on the channel in the past, you've seen uh, beer two mile there, some beer miles that I've done there. Um, other, some other random events that either hidden Easter eggs in our videos if you go back a ways. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll leave it, leave it at that, let you go take, it, take a look. But yeah, the reality is you are taking on some risk. You know, the, kind of the really the best way to do it. And, and I've never gotten into trouble at all, thankfully. Um, maybe I've deserved to. I've, I've never left a track with, you know, bottles or cans or anything. I always clean up after myself. Also, you know, keep the trash can next or the recycling bin. Like, usually we put the beers on the bin. Yeah. as the beer mile is happening and yeah. then pretty much as you as you toss them and you, you finish them we usually have somebody standing by to pour that into the remainder cup and then immediately ditch the yeah. bottle into the recycling yeah thing. yeah and then after the event's over too we usually you know kind of get out of there decently quick but overall whenever i mean whenever we've been at the track doing doing some of the stupid stuff Ever, I've, I've never heard anyone complain. Everyone's actually kind of like, wow, that's this is awesome. Like, yeah. this is a fun show, unexpected show at the track today to see some. I think I think a people. part of it is like, just like don't be sketchy or at, like, obviously, yeah, you are doing something at most tracks that's illegal, but like, we're typically pretty upfront with if people like come up and ask us what we're we're doing, mm -hmm. if they have any concerns, like we we kind of like yeah. do that and then we'll go do the event. Um, and typically everyone's actually been really nice about it and sometimes yeah. even stay, watch and cheer us on. So yeah. So my recommendation would be if you want to do a beer mile with your friends, just keep it to a small group. Um, don't like put a public event up on Facebook or something like that. Just ten of your friends or however many people, just say a time get there, you know, keep your alcohol like in a bag until you're ready to start. And if you do see, you know, kids around or anything like that, like ask the parents and, and confirm that it's okay. Um, and this is part of the hard thing why the world championships are so hard to figure out where they're gonna be located every year is because even if you're paying to rent a track, um, there's still a lot of places that won't let you do it. And there's still a lot of liability around having alcohol on a track and they yeah. don't, you know, they're nervous that you're gonna have a ton of people vomiting and then they're drunk and, and so on and so forth. So just be careful about it, keep it small, get in and out. If you if you think it's sketchy because there's a lot of people around or anything, you know, make sure you ask first. Um, that would be my recommendation. Yeah. Yeah, and as, as always, probably rule number one with anything is just don't be an asshole. Yeah. That's that's a good rule to live by. It's a good if you're yeah if you're impeding on other people's uh, enjoyment and, and harming them in any way or annoying them, then it's probably not a good idea. So, thanks for the question again, Matt. Appreciate it. Um, hopefully, I'll see you out on the lakefront uh, running or you know maybe at the track someday. Let me know yeah. if you wanna you wanna meet up for that uh, off the record beer mile. Wink, wink. Yeah. We don't condone it. We absolutely don't condone it on the record saying that. But you know, wink, wink. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. All right, with that, let's get into the interview with Colleen Quigley of the Bowerman Track Club. Uh, you already know what to do. Help us grow the podcast. Help us continue to bring on awesome people like Colleen. Subscribe to Beer Mile Media on YouTube. Like, comment on the video on YouTube. 
Um, subscribe on your favorite you know, audio platform for the podcast. Shoot us a message. Uh, we appreciate all that stuff. We, we love hearing from you. you know, comment ways to improve, new segments, listener questions, whatever the case is. Really appreciate it. Let's get into it. Here's Colleen and Pi. There's gonna be a lot of Pi footage too. So here they are, let's go. We're joined by Colleen Quigley and Pi. Uh, Hi guys. In a, <laughs> oh, what, what was that? <laughs> I'm really hungry. Where are the snacks? <laughs> oh man, thanks for joining us. Um, unfortunately, we can't be too close to you, keeping socially yeah, distanced yeah. here, being being safe. But yeah, great to see you. Thanks for joining, and thanks for bringing Pi along yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm just this glad you guys a, were yeah. out in Flagstaff. This is amazing. Good it's timing. Great. It's yeah. great. So I guess uh, we wanted to start the interview off. Uh, with some presents. Oh my gosh. That's, that's what we're all about. It's, we gotta princess. thank you for being this on. We gotta... over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Pi, you, want, you might want to pay attention for this one. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Woo yes. Pi's got a new present. <laughs> she loves presents. Oh, she's very happy. You can't take it over there. You're on your leash. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I don't well, know we, if you can get this footage. We picked it. Well, we might get it from the 360. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get it. Uh oh, it's got a squeaker. <laughs> what is that? Oh, heck yeah. Oh, That's yeah. a good girl. That's a good present. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Thank <laughs> you, Jeremy, for a second. You can enjoy your present. Yeah, get it. Oh, so cute. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> She's off. <laughs> Love it. She doesn't care about the humans anymore. Awesome. That's it. <laughs> and with that, yeah, with that pies out. <laughs> so we also got you a second present. Okay. Uh, this one's for you. This one's for me. Okay. This we want this to be a little more of a surprise, I guess. This is oh. definitely more of a surprise. We heard you talking about your training in Flagstaff. Okay. We've been watching. Uh, so this is for you. Good girl. Come here. Oh. Come here. Oh. Now she's so amped up. Oh, I love man. it. Okay. Let's see what this let's, is. Let's see what you so, think. Yeah. Oh based gosh. based off of some of your training, you know, you said that training in Flagstaff is like oh taking God, a shot of Fireball. No. <laughs> so we, we brought 10 shooters of Fireball. <laughs> I'm already gagging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's funny when you train at altitude, your uh, your lungs just start burning. Like you're, uh, it literally feels like you're burning new cavities into your lungs. So I said that after the workout yesterday, I was like, my lungs are burning. It feels like I just took a shot of fireball. So yeah, you guys have been on my social media. I really appreciate this. But I actually freaking hate fireball, so I'm <laughs> not exactly pumped about this. My pie is interested. Well, like, sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Four, yeah there's can more can than four, so. Mom, let's go. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, guys. I don't know. Okay. Now I'm going to destroy the bag. I'm going to put you back in your oh, leash squirt so you can stay here hang out with us. All right. That was great, you guys. Wow. That was amazing. And Pi uh, got her... Oh, she got it out of yeah, the box. Yeah, she got it out of the container. You're smart, Pi. And, uh, Very yeah, smart. She's definitely enjoying her... Puppuccino. There we so, go. There we incredible. go. I don't have anything for you guys. No oh, no, 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 no. The, God, I the interview is the present. I feel bad. Your, pres <laughs> your presence is the present. Oh, <laughs> awesome. So, so yeah. Speaking of fireball yes. training at altitude, how's it been going for the past uh, few weeks? Two weeks? It's, yeah, it's almost uh, Tuesday. Will be two weeks. So almost, almost two weeks. Um, altitude is hard. This is mm -hmm. definitely one of my favorite places to train. As you can see, the sun is shining strong. Yes, yes. Um, no snow yet, knock on wood. Uh, just a lot of great trails, lots of you know amazing places to run. We're, we're based in Portland, and even though it's the runner, like capital of the country, I think they call themselves, mm -hmm, there's yeah. like two places to run <laughs> that are decent in Portland. So yeah. this is like runner's paradise. You could run in different places every day of the week. So. Yeah, that's what a lot of people say. Like, do you prefer um, like dirt roads? Yes, or, okay. dirt roads dirt are. Roads. Yeah, there's a couple that um, we're probably not going to be able to run on as soon as it snows. Mm -hmm. We know that like like the urban trail downtown is is just yeah. like a footpath. It's like no cars um, are allowed on it. So when it gets snowy, it's definitely a little rough. But yeah. the dirt roads are amazing because a lot of times they get cleared even if it snows. So yeah. we'll be 
It'll be sad. Oh yeah, always fun to get lost out on a dirt road for some long <laughs> so run. Or... It is amazing. Yeah, and then we we use a track that's a little um, a little further down in altitude in Sedona. So nice. get a little more oxygen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do, do you feel like you've adapted to the altitude at this point two weeks in or, or still um, get used to it? It takes me like three weeks to really start feeling like I can go for a run without like, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, just work, working really hard. I wear um, a whoop strap actually. Mm. Um, and it gauges like how hard I'm working on every run. And it's definitely still a little bit elevated. <laughs> yeah. Like a strain score would be for an easy run at sea level versus like what it is now. So I'm yeah. still working harder, but um, I think it's just kind of inspiring because every run when you're working so hard, even like a normal run, yeah. you're like, I'm getting so fit. Like yeah. I'm putting in so much work and then you're like starving afterwards. So right. you know that you're burning calories like crazy and just, yeah, working really hard. So is there uh, is there anyone on the team who has like, you feel like adjusted faster? I feel like every time we're out in like Colorado or somewhere, yes. we, have, we, have a mutual, we have a mutual friend who will like yeah, go it's out bullshit. there. Yeah. yeah. It's like how, yeah. This cheating. <laughs> like we're not even at altitude. Yeah. 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 Um, a couple people. It seems like Chris Derrick doesn't really feel altitude, but I don't think he gets as much of an altitude boost either. Mm. So, okay. you know, it's like at least it's fair that he doesn't struggle as much, but, people you know, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He still yeah. gets what we call training camp effect, which just means like we're all here working hard together. Yeah. You know, you get more fit just by being in this environment. Um, but that like physiological benefit of, of altitude, I don't think he gets um, quite as much as like, I, I know that I'm a heavy responder to altitude because I struggle at altitude. Um, but I also like, yeah, I get a big gain out of it. Um, folks who are, uh, born at, at altitude or at least some, some altitude seem to have an easier time with it. So, mm. um, Elise Cranny is definitely, she like, we're on a run this morning going up a hill and she's telling me a story and I literally can't even respond. Like, I'm not even paying attention. I'm I just... like can't even listen because I'm breathing so hard. I'm like, yeah. and she's just explaining, like she's just talking as we're running like uphill at altitude is the worst or like stairs at altitude, the worst. And it's just, yeah, it never gets easier. And she just is trotting along like no big deal but she was born um at altitude in colorado so okay. yeah, i don't as, know i feel like there's three, some uh, i feel like there's something there as three uh midwest natives yeah yeah not, yeah, yeah. we not, ain't getting uh, when no help yeah you look you look at like chris's my stravas it's like 60 feet of elevation yeah exactly <laughs> and then i went to school in florida which is like a right. negative elevation so yeah i'm <laughs> exactly. not being helped at all exactly. but what, what's your mix like currently between uh running and cross training biking swimming? yeah um i always keep a healthy amount of cross training in yeah, my regimen yeah. um just because i like to keep my mileage a little bit lower um you know my low mileage high mileage is all relative but our group is um typically pretty high on the mileage um end so i'm i would like to run more like 80 85 miles but um i know that when i go over 80 for you know a couple weeks things start shit hits the fan yeah, yeah, <laughs> every yeah. time yeah. <laughs> like clockwork yeah. so i keep it around like 75 miles ish sometimes okay. even less than that um and i do about two hours a week of cross training so right now pools are not really a thing with covid you know yeah, yeah. so it's mostly on the bike but i've actually i used to swim a ton and now i've kind of crossed over to the bike and i i don't know i'm just really feeling the bike right now i feel like the lower body exercise is probably better than doing a bunch of upper body work um letting my shoulders and traps and everything get big and tight and <laughs> not exactly conducive to running so yeah i'm digging the bike right now when does yeah when does the peloton sponsorship come through? oh gosh yeah we're uh, <laughs> we're working on some things we're working on some things we'll see we'll see what happens Love they're it. just doing incredibly well right now so they're in the kind of position of like like do we really need to like people promoting us like we're like 10 weeks behind on yeah, this bike <laughs> like, yeah. they can't sell these things i mean they can't right. make them quick enough you right, know for yeah. the the rate that they're selling them so exactly. uh, we'll see but yeah in general I just like uh, getting the lower body exercise and and you can just do it like having it in your home you don't even have to drive to a gym you don't have to yeah. worry about wearing a mask while you're on the bike like yeah. oh wearing a mask in the gym like so we no. have, we, we live in the it's same brutal. condo association and our gym is open but you have to, have wear, to a wear a mask, mask. yeah Holy shit. Yeah, try that wearing a mask in a gym at 7,000 feet of altitude. No, thanks. You <laughs> will legit yeah. die. Not it is chance. the worst. I noticed my heart rate's like consistently like anywhere from 10 to 20 beats. It's like, higher. It's, it's like being mask. at altitude. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. disgusting. At altitude yeah. to it's, the mask. Yeah, it's, it's it, poor man's altitude. Can't. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Except for you're doing it opposite because really at altitude. 
I don't know if that's going to be too loud. Oh, I think it should be. Hopefully it should be good. Okay. That's all right. We're recording outside people if you're listening. Exactly. Just deal with it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I was just going to say, really at altitude, you should be sleeping higher and then working out a little lower, except for when you're doing the COVID altitude, you're working out at a higher altitude and you're sleeping at a lower altitude. So you're kind of messing the whole thing up. You're doing it wrong, basically. (laughs) Everything is wrong about COVID, so, yeah. (laughs) Okay, well, it's it's not Friday, but I noticed that your hair is not braided. It actually is, is Adam. You just got to look closer. I have a little little number over here. (laughs) (laughs) So so let's talk Fast Braid Friday. (laughs) Let's do it. Quick origin stories, and is there an alternative for for our short hair? Oh, my gosh, yeah. You guys, no no help over there. No hope. Um, um, fast braid Friday started out as just like a fun little, I just French braid my hair a lot when I run and I posted like a selfie on my Instagram one time, uh, on Friday saying is French braid Friday a thing? Cause it should totally be a thing. Like this is fun. Yeah. And a bunch of people like responded. Um, yeah. and it was, you know, I was like, Oh cool. Like uh, and other people started taking pictures and then posting them and using the hashtag. I was like, Oh, this is fun. And so I did it again and then got more people to do it. Um, and it kind of like became a fun thing. Um, but then I realized that if having it be French French braid Friday was too specific to like one type of braid. And there's all these different braid styles out there. And you don't want to be calling, (laughs) of course, you know these things. And you don't want to be calling different braids the wrong name because they sometimes have cultural uh, meaning. And so Mm. I was like, "Ah, okay, I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to offend anyone, but I want it to be inclusive um, to all those with hair long enough to do these (laughs) things. And so um, a friend of mine said, you should call it Fast Braid Friday. And I was like, oh my God, that's what it should have been the whole time but of course it didn't start like as a movement it just started as something silly um but now it's all about like doing something on the outside that makes you feel really good on the inside and have you know makes it makes you feel confident and powerful and of course fast so i do it on fridays but i get pictures like all you know every day of the week it doesn't have to be on fridays um i just like the alliteration of Fast Braid Friday. So. Yeah, it's, it's a good hashtag. Yeah, yeah. It is good. It's, good. it's fun. Would you believe that this guy can French braid? I yeah. I probably would believe that. <laughs> you would? Yeah. Do you want to try? Yeah, I could try. All right. Let's uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw my mask on. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Yeah. I, brought, uh, I got some hand sanitizer. Let's, yeah. Calm down. Calm down. All right. He's, uh, he used to be a camp counselor. At least I, I didn't know I didn't know him that far back. Yeah. We met in college. But, oh, okay. uh, but supposedly camp counselor uh, braiding hair back oh, yeah, in the day. Yeah, it's been a while. So, oh so I, yeah, I was a camp counselor and for a while like you typically they would have us do your age group plus like your specific like I am a male camp counselor so obviously like I have a bunch of dudes in the camp and and they were shorthanded hello pie hi sweetie um so they were shorthanded one time so yeah they they essentially tortured me until I learned how to French braid oh my god that's amazing I love it well I just had one incident because I yeah I was like I gotta have a braid Oh, I where did I, oh, I also oh I put it in here. There we go. Yeah, you just gonna say couldn't have lost it. You just had it. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I love your mask, by the way. Ooh, COVID. Like, it's like, Ooh, David. Yeah, that that was one of the like the Shit's Creek. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shit's Creek was one of the COVID binges for sure. Oh, of course, absolutely. I've had way too many. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, we just finished Bridgerton. Pretty- oh, that's I've, been I've recommended. Heard, yeah, on, I've heard yeah, good things. Endlessly. Yeah. yeah. All right, here you go. Oh man, I'm just, I'm like nervous. Moment, yeah, moment of truth here. All like, right. I don't know. I don't know. Exactly. So now we can compare. Yeah, we'll see oh, if they have to do the it backwards. So I'm just hard. kidding. You don't have to do it inside out. But, yeah, I just, I, I, because I usually do it down, like from the top down. Oh yeah, do it however you feel. Okay. Like do you want to undo your bun? Well, this part is just too tingly. I don't think you're going to be able to do it. Is that, do you not have confidence? Well, <laughs> really not. Hi, hi, hi. I love you. I think it's going to be kind of too hard. Hi, I love you. Hi, hi, you, you should funny. visit, you can visit your sister and then you'll meet Nala. Oh, she would love that. <laughs> Oh, this is not, not what you want to be working with right uh, here. That, I can do it. I can do it. I can do, it. <laughs> I can do, I can do anything. <laughs> we can do anything. All right. All right. 
All right. Well, and then I'm... after you, after I do this, you have to rate it out of ten. Okay. <laughs> one bite, everybody knows the rules. One bite, everybody knows. That's right. Also, also if I doing? if no. I hurt you, you can yell at me. It's like a very um, tough scalp. Probably used to it at this point. Yeah. So so while yeah, he's doing that, say, you have questions yeah, right? let's let's keep it rolling yeah. while he's oh, while he's is, doing this that. Is a good content. Um, this is quality content. So how did how did that translate then into French Bread Friday? Right, yeah. So then Shelby, my teammate, hi, hey, no digging holes, good girl. So yeah, so I started French Braid Friday, and then my you know good teammate Shelby thought it'd be funny to take a little spoof off of it and do French Bread Friday. So every Friday I would post like. Um, like it started even when we were at altitude and I I was uh, dealing with an injury. And <laughs> Fire's not happy. <laughs> and I would like be at the pool with a braid in. Yeah. You know, telling people like, you know, even if you're injured too, like I'm injured, I'm putting my hair in a braid, I'm gonna go get in the pool, get my work in, like, you know, being super inspiring and encouraging to young yeah. runners, as I am, you know, being this good person. And then here comes <laughs> Shelby, it's like she'll go to the pool with it, she'll get a baguette of bread and go to the pool and take a picture next to the pool being like Eats, eating French bread by the pool, <laughs> talking about how, you know, eating bread is so good for you, for your recovery, and how she's a mermaid and she loves bread. <laughs> and it got to the point where, like, it'd be on Thursday and I'd be planning my post for Friday. And yeah. Shelby would be asking me about, like, what I'm going to post so that she could, hmm, okay, I think I can work with that. All right, I'm going like, to nice. Yeah. Yeah, nice. She would figure out what she was going to do. So we were kind of, like, collaborating. It was pretty <laughs> hilarious. And then I changed to fast. Um, Braid Friday, and she kind of lost interest, so she hasn't she hasn't done it. Yeah, it seems like it kind of died a she little had bit. Some, but... She had some loyal followers for a second there, but definitely. So it, so it never started as something I was like people making bread because I know a lot of people oh. during COVID did that. I haven't seen that. Um, I did see some French bread relays. Mm, so like yes. they were using oh, a yes. of French bread awesome. instead of a baton yep. that took off for a little bit. I saw yeah. a few of those. Yeah. Um, Shelby and I did actually did one of those. Um, yeah, we, we took it, you know, we took it to some heights. So was, and then it kind of died. was there actually a high level of bread consumption? I mean, especially Shelby, Shelby does she, does she actually eat a lot? Week, and I was getting okay. pissed at her because she wasn't eating it and it was just going moldy <laughs> and she's buying bread every week. I'm like, you're wasting it. That's like, a if sin. you're going to do it, you're going to eat the bread. It was yeah. Like going moldy before she would eat it. Dang. Yeah. I just, I had this impression that she was like, you know, actually eating like bread. half a loaf, like before <laughs> her races or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. No, this was totally fake. <laughs> Oh dang, that's Not a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> so go I guess going into 2021, uh hopefully an Olympic year. Yeah. What are what are your plans for racing or are there any plans at this point ahead of uh the Olympic trials? Yeah, so it seems like indoors is probably not gonna happen. Yeah. Um Milrose is canceled, USA is canceled, the New Balance meet is still on, the New Balance Grand Prix or whatever. For, for now. For now. For now. <laughs> on, right. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen there, but it's, we're just kind of counting on indoors probably um not really being a thing. And so yeah. we're just starting to look at some outdoor race opportunities in places that warm, Austin, California, trying to after this camp, you know, we're working really hard. So we want to be able to show off the fruits of our labor when yep. we're done here. Um, but not like there's nothing for sure guaranteed on the schedule. I tried to get some information from Jerry this week at practice and he was not super forthcoming. I was not, not super pleased, but um, he did say it's some outdoor races end of February, beginning of March. Okay. It's his, his overall plan. Stay tuned. Yeah, <laughs> excellent, yeah. excellent. And then hopefully we'll take a little break and then ramp up before like the trials and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. All right, so here's the thing about yes. braiding. Do you need a hair tie? Is I don't know how to do the hair tie. Oh, I can do I'm, the I'm hair just gonna tie. make you do yeah, that. I can do that. <laughs> wow, look at you! Oh, oh my gosh, Adam! You actually, yeah. Crazy. I mean, <laughs> Good my work. first time witnessing the skill as We're, well. Yeah, so, have you ever seen him braid before? You no, know, here, here <laughs> at the I've not seen this. Here at the beer mile, he was podcast. bragging about wow. this, like coming in. He's like, "Oh, I can actually do it." And I was like, "Really? Like, wow. We're at, I, we have range of the beer mile podcast." I would have uh, brushed my hair. <laughs> I, know, I, I know. I was gonna say. I was like, "Oh man, this would be a lot easier with the brush." <laughs> oh man. Oh my god, look! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, okay, I'm not doing too a bad. video. Here not I am on the Beer Mile podcast, and I just got my hair braided. I'm just, this is Adam's handiwork, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wear this for my uh, bike this afternoon. This is this is a good look. I'm feeling, I'm feeling fast. I'm feeling confident. Yeah, fast made Friday. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, now I can get my mic back. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Like, I got forgot about him. Okay. Hopefully, you could hear me on the uh, last yeah, we, That's the thing. We always, every, there's a bunch of different mics here. So <laughs> okay, cool. work, you know? we, we got fallbacks. You guys are flexible. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, this is great. Good work. A plus. I try, I try. A plus. <laughs> okay, speaking of range, uh, <laughs> We yeah we try we try and show that a couple days ago we got uh, we might have had a few with Eric and Craig. Uh huh. Um, uh huh. <laughs> a few. Uh, a few. Not a couple, a few. A couple. Well, <laughs> yeah. What's more, a couple or a few? Uh, a few, few is more. more. Okay, we definitely had a few. <laughs> we had a few. Um, a few more than a few. Oh god. And once we get home, we're really looking to like get back in the swing of things and detox. What would you recommend? Okay, you have come to the right lady. Oh, yes. all right, all right. <laughs> I am actually doing dry January. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. okay. I'm that nerd, but I do it every year just because I feel like with the holidays and just being home, eating crab, drinking every night I just like get to camp and I'm like I need to like I called it a cleanse but then my roommate Gabrielle was like let's not call it a cleanse like that has bad connotations exactly so we're calling it a recalibration it's our new word for it which I really like that was Gabrielle's idea it's a recalibration because you get to the point where you're just like craving it all the time like in Mm -hmm. the evening you don't even think about it you're just like popping open a drink of pouring a glass like, of wine. Whoops, I just went through a bag of M&M's. Exactly. <laughs> you just reach for it and your body just is like sugar, sugar, sugar mm-hmm. or, you know, if you're like, I just want that refreshing beer, like yeah. you just crave it. And so you have to like get your body to recalibrate and not just like reach for that and be like, okay, if I'm reaching for M&M's, like what do I really want? Like I'm am I actually hungry? Like maybe I should like go have like a smoothie or something. Mm -hmm. Or if I want like something sweet and cold, like I want ice cream smoothie or like yogurt with granola on top. Like you've got to find like, okay, what I'm craving this, but like, what do I really want? And like really asking yourself before you just do like the no thought, just habitual, Mm, like reach for whatever it is. Um, so I've done a couple like kombuchas instead of like beer or like, um, tart cherry juice with sparkling water. Um, you got to like get a little bit creative. I'm still (laughs) trying to get around to the like kombucha train. I've tried it. I think I've had got to get on. I've had it on, on like board. three separate occasions, and I just like what, it doesn't it, taste good. What brands are you are you trying? Oh, I I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta. I think my favorite one for at least for beginners is the I think it's the Brew Doctor one. It's like okay. the wider okay. bottle. They have one that's vanilla flavored okay. that I find like doesn't even taste like kombucha, so it could okay. be a good like gateway drink my, yeah. for you. <laughs> my gateway kombucha, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a frappuccino for someone who says they don't like coffee. Cool. That's a slippery cool. slope, you know. Yep. Like all of a sudden. Yep. And drinking black coffee every day. Yeah, well, yeah we'll, we'll talk about <laughs> coffee addictions later. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely am not giving up coffee. That yeah. is no. But that's, yeah, that's I'm doing no sugar this month and no alcohol. So I'm going on a recalibration of that's my a, body. Yeah, that's a good yeah, we, yeah, we should have brought some of the no sugar uh, Smirnoff ices that we gave. Craig oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that sounds delicious. Yeah, is that, is that healthy? I don't yeah, think so. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's we said no sugar. No Doesn't sugar. go against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, what's your preference? Wine, beer? Oh, wine, for sure. Yeah, my boyfriend and I both do um, a decent amount of wine. Uh, Red wine, we do a lot of Pinots because we're in in Portland. We're not far from Willamette Valley. So a lot of Oregon Pinots, um, some Sonoma Pinots too. Not a you know as much white wine, but um, yeah, a good red wine. Uh, now I want a red wine. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. That's, a, that's another. Yeah, we're, we're definitely. I'm like two weeks in. <laughs> heard a lot of good things about the Portland yeah. vineyards. Let's uh, yeah. Yeah, we uh, we go. kind of I don't know we kind of got into a little spree. We have uh, off-site wine storage now, where like we have a facility where we store our wine. So nice. we have gotten to the level yeah that we couldn't have it all in our. 550 square foot condo with two people and a dog um yeah. so we are now paying monthly to have someone store our wine interesting, interesting. yeah we stooped that low yeah yeah, yeah. it's oh, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean i have met like way more monthly subscriptions that i probably shouldn't have yeah so. i mean we our last episode was with ryan hill and he said oh that, yeah he yeah. said he basically switched from beer to being a wine guy yeah in Portland, exactly Portland he has all his subscriptions yeah. and everything yeah so I, chicago is like yeah. the opposite you probably Chicago's can't be a wine beer. person yeah no you can't beer. yeah evan evan actually is um a member because evan's from chicago he's a member at um Ryan's a member member at Sokol Blosser. Evan's a member somewhere else with his wife, Sophia. Um, but yeah, if you take Evan back to Chicago, he's drinking beer for sure. All right. Noted. <laughs> yeah. Duly noted. Yeah. Oh, I'm a beer. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a good scene out there though. It's a good wine scene in Portland. <laughs> Heck yeah. Also, I'm curious, just on the topic of beer while we're here. Yeah. Um, who, ha- first of all, have you ever tried a beer mile? I've never done it. You've never done it? Okay. I want to though. I actually think I wouldn't be that bad at it. Okay. okay like, so, so like post fifth Ave mile mm, kind of mm. scene. Fall. Yeah. yeah September, this, October, yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fall. Yeah, fall time. Yeah, exactly. Fall time. Could you, could you foresee yourself? I could foresee myself. Okay. I think. And it's not for free. We're I would put a, a bet out there that the only person on my, only woman on my team who could beat me in a beer mile would be Shelby. Okay. Okay. That was, yeah. So when, we're, actually what, when you're talking Carissa to Chris, Chris she's well. a really good drinker. Yeah. Okay. She said, yeah, Chris yeah. said Shelby. She Chris said chug. that she thinks she could be okay at it, but she yeah, was, Chris she was all be able to drink fast enough. I don't ooh, ooh, hey, <laughs> Chris, if you're, if you're listening to this, <laughs> <laughs> it's on Chris. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Chris might that's be able awesome. to get me in the run part. Cause I, yeah, that, but I think I could get, I could drink faster. I think I could end up making up the difference. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep your name down for the potential beer mile. Definitely. I like it. And how about on the guy's side? On the a Bowerman team, who like who think? would be good? Yeah, who do you think oh, would be good? Gosh, I don't know. I think you know. I think Centro could be pretty good. Um, <laughs> I think uh, JT might be kind of good. Uh, he's just like a crazy young. I'm, you know, I'm thinking the young guys are going to be better than. Like Evan, I don't know. He's you know he's a little. Evan great. would be my sleep. Like he got Sleeper the ex- he got the experience. He right? does have the experience. He does have the experience. Yeah. I don't know. He might be good. I think. I don't know. I think Centro would probably take it home. Interesting. So Centro, like totally random. I ran into him in Chicago. It's been a few months ago now. Yeah. But he was like running on the lakefront path. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I gotta turn around and run with, <laughs> run with him because he we have a mutual friend and he was with that person. So he's I, he specifically said. No way in hell I could even finish a beer mile. Really? That was what he thought, yeah. but I would have I would have said like he's, he, he's, he doesn't drink very much, yeah. but he loves attention. And I feel like he would yeah. be able yeah. if everyone was watching him, I Here's think he could do light. it. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. 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 Chris's other pick was uh potentially Lopez. She said Oh really? She, she thinks, <laughs> yeah. she just thinks Lopez just loves attention feeling. too, so maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe he would. I love attention too, by the way. This is not a bad thing. Oh, okay. you know, yeah. like, We're doing a podcast. Yeah. Like this is not good. exactly, yeah. 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 <laughs> no judgment but uh, yeah i think yeah lopez i could see lopez being pretty good and he likes to throw back a beer so yeah, yeah. that could be a good pick too perfect okay on i guess on the topic of teammates i saw a lot of chess going on oh yeah who is the best chess player on? The i don't know i've club? actually not seen them play we've been so um separated because everyone's in their different houses and stuff yeah. but so i've only seen them play on social media as well mm-hmm. and like heard about it on runs um so i'm not sure who's good but i could tell you that probably none of them are good <laughs> <laughs> but yes. everyone's getting really into it because of queen's camping i was gonna even say find a chess exactly board that. right speaking now they're of, like sold uh, out speaking of quarantine binges yes check it out i yeah i've seen a couple episodes i didn't quite get as into that as it did to bridgerton because mm. i binged the heck out of that but yeah, uh we did queen's see it is like four episodes in yeah you, you kind of you get okay like, so yeah i'm at like episode three yeah. or four i think so you're yeah. almost there uh, yeah i'm at yeah. the cusp i need to keep going <laughs> <laughs> for, for the bowerman team do you have any like rivalries with any other team or think do you think uh, kind of from a team aspect of like oh we really want to like show that team up or or i mean there's not <laughs> talk, really let's any other talk shit teams like i love that many, that's true. i love that like now emma's group's getting a little bigger like yeah, we could maybe yeah. start like maybe start a rivalry with them you know like they're getting close to being we yeah. just have we have like 12 women like yeah how do you like we can't compete with anyone you know <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't know we've just gotten so big and we're our range is so big actually we don't have any now that shalene um you know, isn't racing anymore. I don't think we have marathoners to, to throw to the range and, and Kate just, um, just moved away. So we had our, that was our 800 girl, although Shelby runs 800 too, but, um, yeah, we got good range from at least the 10 K to the 800, 1500 yeah. and yeah, like 12 people. I mean, it's a monopoly. So it's all, yeah. It's almost like you don't it's need, ma- it's a monopoly. We need I, I love <laughs> those seeing other groups, um, getting bigger and like kind of uh, growing. I think just having the camaraderie of being with teammates and, you know, having people to work out with people to go to camp with and like build that community has been super important for for me and for everyone on the group so i love yeah. seeing you know that there's kind of a, a resurgence of that and i think it could be really fun to do some like dual meets or sure. um oh. try meets with these different teams as you know as Definitely. you get bigger so Definitely. yeah i'm into go, yeah. it i love good rivalries i went to yeah. florida state you know of, of hate the gators yeah. love a good rivalry <laughs> yeah i mean going to the olympics hopefully i mean it's got to be 
uh, like a huge boost throughout the trials yeah. of just seeing other teammates get on. And, yeah. and even if there's Actually, like some um, of that competitive aspect too of like, we got, we got the most teammates that exactly. qualified for the Olympics. Exactly. Think, we're, yeah, think, um, we're having a barman section at the Olympic trials where we're going to have, everyone's going to have different t-shirts for different days, have little like flags and yeah. um, what are those like soccer scarf things oh, and yeah, yeah. just like all kinds of fun stuff that, That's you know, awesome, make yeah. it feel like you're on the team and you're supporting the squad and make it more of a team sport, which I think is, would be good for, good for the sport. For yeah. You're, you're talking to, I think. We were actually listening to a podcast you did almost well, a little over a year ago. Uh -huh. yeah. and you're talking about how uh, everyone like starts, you know, they're they're qualifying. And I think it was Shelby who like leading up to her race. Yes, right? everyone she's else like, had qualified, and she's like, "Oh yeah. well, shit!" Like I guess I we're have all to training too. together. <laughs> like I yeah. can't be the only one out of the altitude group that didn't make the team. Right. Like, yeah. yeah, definitely. <laughs> there was that. We were building so much momentum through the trials in 2016. Like. You know, I think, um, well, we had the two marathoners in February who made the team. Shalane and Amy both made it. And then um, I think it was Emily was the first night. The 10K mm -hmm. um, was mm -hmm. the beginning of the trial. So then she made it. And then Courtney and I made it. And so then, yeah, by the time it got to Shelby, she was like, you know, I can't be left home. So <laughs> yeah. I think that's a big, huge factor too. Just like you get, first of all, you get confidence from seeing the women that you train with perform well. And you're like, I hang with them in workouts. Like what's the reason that I wouldn't be able to do the same thing. So when it's your turn, you get some confidence from that. Yep. And just being like, you know, a little healthy amount of fear that you don't want to be <laughs> yeah. the only one yeah. left home. Like, so, man, am I the, am I the, that's really motivating. <laughs> yep. Am I the lamest of the group? Yeah, exactly. Do I, do I like, not I get can. to go? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. L looking forward, I guess, over the coming years, do you have any ideas on like how long you want your running career to go? Are yeah, you, do you think about question. it as like two more Olympic games? Like, how do you, how do you think about that? It's a good question. I uh, never went like, in 2016, I, I never saw myself continuing to run after 2016. Not a lot of people don't know that, but I, yeah, I don't know. I just did it. I never saw myself as like being a professional runner. And so I did it for like a year thinking, I'll just like try this out or like see if I can make a team. I just like want to make an Olympic team. Yeah. And if I do great and if I don't, I can move on. At least I tried because yeah. I graduated with a year to go before the trial. So I figure if I only waste a year of my life trying to do this, like <laughs> it's not a big deal. Um, but then, yeah, I got the bug for sure and as soon as the the trials ended or as soon as the olympics ended in rio i was like well i'm doing that again for sure like not yeah like i thought i was gonna go like one year no way definitely got hooked um and yeah now i'm looking at like 2028 like that would be cool 2028 is in um la like that'd be fun to bring it back to the states what am like am i gonna be still be steepling again like i don't know am i gonna do, yeah. again? Am I do a marathon like i don't know <laughs> so yeah there's options and i'm um, definitely keeping the all the doors and windows open and just kind of see how things progress but um definitely. definitely 2021 and 2024 i feel like will be prime prime time for me and then you know anything after that would just be totally i mean anything after making one team is gravy exactly. but uh exactly. yeah anything after i feel like my my prime years would just be like icing on top so do you do you think about anything else down the line that you like big goals that you want to accomplish from a career standpoint like like books or yeah. movies or like do you have any other career ambitions that yeah, you've already thought about too? kind of interesting i feel like there's definitely something fun about like i like social media and I like connecting with my fans and I just enjoy that part of it. And I know that even there's people on my team who just don't, they just want to run, eat, sleep, mm -hmm. run and play video yep. games and run, eat, sleep. Like that is what, well, you don't know. Don't give Centro too much shit. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Centro will respond he to us. He's yeah, called out. He, he connects with his fans actually really he, well he in, his, in, his, in his own, own way. way. In yep. his own yeah. way. Yep. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's, I just, I like that kind of, aspect of the sport too and I think it could be cool to get more of that in track and field um to you know help maybe get some more fans in track and field. Mm -hmm. um so I could see myself doing something in media um after you know after getting done running in, in sports media or even yeah. um kind of go like the agent route or like the PR route um I actually have a PR company that I started working with uh, gosh a couple of years ago now I guess um I have an agent in in New York and one in LA. And I even think what they do is really cool and helping promote athletes and like get them connected up with different media um, opportunities as well as like some, I've gotten a couple like one off uh, contracts with uh, different brands through them too. So they kind of, cool. kind of do it all. I'm like, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I definitely want to stay connected in sport. 
throughout, you know, I feel like that's just going to be through my whole life. I will want to be connected to sport um, yeah, and just kind of see how that like all those things interweave and uh, how it all plays out. Definitely. Yeah, we'll have to open up like a position on the C-suite of Beer Mile Media. <laughs> That's right. Hopefully we'll be big enough in four to eight years. I love it. Yeah, circle back. We'll, yeah, yeah, circle back to me. Circle back to me. Be the next you're barstool sports. You're yeah, you're better at all that stuff than us. PR, marketing, <laughs> social, social, social media. media. Way better at that than us. So we'll let you take over. I was, oh my God. I, I'm, a, I'm a little upset because I've realized that social media is like not, I'm just like not good enough at it to... <laughs> Like there, there's too much new shit like between you gotta stay, yeah, just Twitter like, adding current. fleets Quick. and like I was home for the holidays and I was talking to my parents and I was like, is this like I'm 24, but like, is this what it feels like to be old? Oh. <laughs> and and my dad is like, wait, like he's probably better at using Twitter than I am. And is I'm he like, a tweeter? I was going to say he probably uses Facebook. Uh, no, he actually uses Twitter. Twitter. He doesn't have a Facebook. That okay, is, your dad's hip. Person. I know. Yeah. Wow. Know. Yeah, my dad's all about the Facebook. But I was, I was just a little upset because I'm like, wow, I'm like already past my prime and not even. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. I feel old sometimes too though. Like Sinclair on our team is, I think she's the youngest one now. Yeah. And we were just talking about something the other day and we were like, we should have Sinclair. Like she'll know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. She knows, she knows the lingo. Yeah. Yeah. I already feel I'm 28. Like I feel hecka old sometimes. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. What the new, I still can't figure out TikTok. Like it's, it's hard. You got to keep up with like things changing, but it's yeah. also super fun. Like you never get bored. Oh yeah. Nothing yeah. ever gets stale because there's always something new to yeah. do and explore yeah. and try. So, so between you have social media skills, PR, <laughs> other rep stuff, you've got obviously the running. Yep. I got dab- a little interest in dietetics, like a little nutrition, oh, well, cooking I'll stuff. Tell, I'll tell Jordan to hit you up in the DMs. There you go. She's uh, uh-huh. a year and a half away from being an RD. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Is she doing your internship right now? That'll be That's next- this fall. Okay, yeah. yeah. So she's yeah. in her last year of school. So, cool. Yeah, yeah uh, but- I did dietetics, and then I, instead of doing the internship, I signed you know, to start running pro. And I was but like, I can't you, like, do so both at the same yeah. time. Yeah, you can always go you back. You still have that option though. Yeah. I could go back. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I'll, you know, it's like a whole year. The, to do the, the matching internship. process, like matching. It seems I, like so, I would be really hard. I think to get matched that far out of school. I yes. think it would be really tough to get matched. But also you so. like, you have a unique story. So I mean, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think staying connected somehow to even if I don't actually, you know, get my RD, getting uh, staying connected to food and nutrition in some yeah. form yeah, um, could be cool, too. Yeah. I mean, you've got plenty of stuff in, yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, for sure. Like cooking up a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, so between all of these things, dabbling and modeling, like you're, obviously you're gorgeous. Do you feel like you <laughs> have won the genetic lottery? And how much of your career do you attribute to luck mm. versus skill? Oh, what podcast is it that always asks this? Um, oh, did we riff somebody? I, think I mean, I've, I've heard this not only just run. There's a running podcast that does, but I've also heard it on other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's I'm another upset. podcast I always listen oh, to that it's, always um, asks that. Uh, the NPR one about uh, yes, like when you so Guy Raz, I built this. Yes, yes, oh. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not running. It's no, yeah. no. It's not. It's just, I don't mind ripping how I built it's this. A, that's it's an a amazing question. Yeah, Guy Raz is great. Yeah, he always asks like he's yeah talking to like the founder of whatever. Yeah, Pat Goni. Yeah, exactly. Like how much of your career do you, you know, attribute to to luck or to skill? Which is a great question. Um, a lot of it is like even when I was was modeling in high school, I was acutely aware of like the only reason they want me for this is because you know somehow my mom, and my dad met, and then like they made me. I have nothing to do with that. Like I literally, and it just happens to be that like the way we are in society right now, they value mm-hmm. white chicks with blonde hair and like they think that looks good. And so that's why I'm getting this gig. Like it really has nothing to do with who I am as a person, which was a healthy perspective because when I didn't get the job, I could also use the same perspective to be like, I have nothing. It's not me. Like right, right, they right. just weren't looking for me. It wasn't, you know, I didn't do anything to mess it up. Right. I didn't offend anyone or like show up being an asshole they just like weren't looking for me yeah, and so like, i could oh, let it go cheekbones are in the wrong position exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. but it goes the same way too you you know it helps you keep a kind of a, you know normal somewhat normal sized head about like you know 
that you didn't do anything to deserve this or to like earn this. It just so happens, you know, that like this is what they were looking for. And that's the way that you look. Um, so a lot of that was obviously just luck of genetics mm -hmm. and like whatever. I think why I ended up going into sport was because I felt like I, I moved my senior year of high school. I moved away from I kind of had the um, the opportunity, the fork in the road to go move to New York and become a professional model, sign with an agency, become rich and famous, <laughs> walk the runways yeah. in Paris and Milan, or I could go this way and sign, you know, with coach Karen Harvey at Florida State and take a full ride and, and go be a Seminole and become part of the NCAA. And I, I chose that because I felt like it was something that I could really be proud of, like something that I could work my ass off. You earned and then it. when I did it, I could say yeah. like, yeah, like I did that. Yeah. Now, caveat, obviously, there's a lot of genetics that goes <laughs> into that, too. But I felt like it was way more like skill, way more um, rewarding just because you felt like you really did have something to do with it. And, and not that modeling is like it has some skill. You have to like practice at it. But uh, so much of it was ju I just felt like was just luck mm -hmm. versus um, running. I could really feel like accomplished when I did something like even now I do a, a hard workout and, you know, you just get that feeling of like, yeah. heck, yeah, I crushed that. Like that <laughs> was all me. Like it's an individual sport. So you're just like that. I just crushed that. Um, and so, yeah, it's definitely both. But I think what drew me to running was that it felt like, you know, felt like more um an accomplishment than just rocking walking a runway somewhere yeah absolutely. Uh, I mean, obviously professional runners like you know talented but at the same time i mean you're also training 20 25 yeah, you hours gotta a make week a lot of sacrifices 10 years, 15 years yeah. 20 for sure years. So, and it, yeah and it takes so a long time you can't to not see the work rewards. hard and be in the olympics like exactly. you still have to work hard no matter what right gotta of have what. the talent you gotta yeah. work hard and then even then just like a little bit of luck on race day that like right. yeah. someone so doesn't shove yeah. you who or shows like up, trip or like exactly so yeah. so many factors that go yeah. into it but yeah. I do definitely like even when I'm home for Christmas this year I see my mom like on the spin bike in our house and I like look at the way that her body is built and stuff I'm like god I have my mom's legs like that's crazy <laughs> and I tell her that all the time I'm like mom I wouldn't be the runner I am if I didn't have your legs and she's like you're right she like loves it <laughs> she loves that but yeah it's yeah, a lot you a had, lot of genetics yeah, Got a lot of good home. genes a couple, probably like a couple weeks before uh, going out to altitude, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Your, your parents, the the snap or not snaps, the Insta stories you put, they're, they're so like <laughs> just like cute old like they're Midwest no, people. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. So, so Midwest. Cute. They um they haven't retired yet, but they just bought um right before Christmas they bought a truck, a white Tacoma, and a um new camp tab 400 camper it's like one of those nice. teardrop camper things mm -hmm. yeah. um so they're definitely preparing for retirement they're gonna go like they've already once covid's over they're gonna uh, rent the house out they're gonna retire rent the house out and then just like travel the country in their camper for a year so mm -hmm. we should we should do that before we retire I yeah was gonna say, i'm like this sounds that. pretty we great and so covid's not a bad time if they didn't have to work they're both teachers and if they didn't have to work they'd be doing it right now for oh, sure yeah. but <laughs> yeah, I got to get those Zoom classes done. You can't really do that from like a campground with no Wi-Fi. So oh, yeah, I, sh I shudder like thinking about high school or uh, honestly like any grade doing doing Zoom calls online. For class. I know both, both my brother and mom are teachers, and I yeah. do not envy that at all. Yeah, my dad teaches high school math to, at an all boys school, and it just seems like yeah, he's ready to retire. <laughs> <laughs> he's like this. Sucks. Uh, yeah, I feel like everyone who's like my, my brother. <laughs> I've actually, we're, we're twins, so obviously he's a bit younger, new to the industry. But all all the people, <laughs> all the people who have been teaching for a while, who have gone into Zoom teaching, absolutely hate it. And yeah. they're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna retire. Yeah. Like, if this happens for more it's than a year, it's tough. But it's tough for the students too. Like we oh, were just yeah. talking this morning. Um, one of my teammates has a, a sister who's a freshman in college, and it's like, God, to be a freshman, like don't have like you mm -hmm. go to campus and then like, right. Yeah. So I, I couldn't imagine. I mean, if I if I had to. If I was in elementary school, especially, and was on, had to be on Zoom calls, it just wouldn't happen. Like, yeah. I, I was Attention so like, span, yeah. not oh, super long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've gotten better as I've gotten older, yeah. but like, especially when I was younger, there's no way. No. There's no way I could have I do really industry. appreciate all like the videos on Instagram of the, the, the recorded Zoom calls, though, with the kids, like the teacher leaves the room and the kids, it's just hilarious it's, to it's think of craziness. these little like seven year olds on Zoom and they're figuring it out. Like, yeah. Yeah. they're yeah. gonna, their lives are gonna be changed because they know how to do things things that we would never have done at that age yeah, yeah right on. So. Yeah. definitely um, all right i have i have one more like in the like if you know you know question mm. fire away. um let's talk about your clotter ring 
Oh, yeah. If you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so most of our listeners have no Didn't idea. Didn't see that coming. That was they good. have no idea what that is. Yeah. Tell us you had to educate it. me on that too. I did. In the right, do you have Irish roots? I do not, but my girlfriend does. Okay, cool. I, so, I actually got her uh, her family heirloom stuck on my finger. But anyway, that's, oh a, that's a story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, this one's mine. Um, but uh, so I'm kind of, I'm Irish. I'm like Irish and German. And my boyfriend is actually like very Irish. He uh, has dual citizenship for the U.S. and Ireland. Um, his family used to go there all the time growing up. And Kevin and I have been dating since high school. We are 11 plus years into dating. Um, and when we, when I grad, he's a year older, but when I graduated high school, we took um, six weeks in the summer and just traveled around Europe um, with backpacks. And we uh, did um, Cork and Dublin. And I think it was when, yeah, it was when we were in Cork, um, I found a cloud of ring. Um, so they're an Irish love ring. And I don't know if like how close you zoom in oh, but yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll 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 <laughs> if you um place the ring on the way it is now it's like your the heart of the ring is facing in like towards my heart like it's facing towards my heart which means that my heart is taken <laughs> and if it faces out it means that your heart is open to new love so i've yeah i've been wearing it since um that was in 2011 i graduated oh, wow. high school and I have yeah. not lost it, which is actually a little like Irish luck because I lose shit like crazy. <laughs> I cannot keep track of my stuff. Like I'm yeah. always losing stuff and I wear this ring every day and I take it off like when I swim and stuff so it doesn't get like nasty, but um, I have not lost it since 2011. So it's like 10 years now. Yeah. He's very know. observant. Knock on, knock on wood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah good eyes with the, with the cloud <laughs> ring. That's the story. Yeah. You don't wear one though. I don't. Well, yeah. I was never given one. So. Oh, well, you're waiting. You're waiting. Your heart, yeah, Jordan. Your heart is still open to new love, I guess. <laughs> By default, it's facing out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get on that, Jordan. <laughs> uh, going back to the sponsorships, one thing I wanted to ask about. I know there's been kind of a trend in the past few years, um, like CBD and athletics. Oh, sure. Has been a growing trend, and I I get ads all the time on mm. when I'm online of like CBD and yes. like Let's Run. I'd see ads for CBD and yes. everything. So. So talk a little bit about that and the sponsorships sure. that you have there. Yeah, it's an interesting um, kind of world with CBD because they cannot do a lot of traditional marketing just with like the rules about like, I don't know what, who kind of controls that. But yeah. from what I'm told, they're not allowed to like market in normal ways that like you could for like a pair of shoes. Um, so they rely a lot on social media, like influencers and stuff, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of interesting. Um, but I started using CD CBD a couple years ago. Well probably a few years ago now, um, not, uh, in order to get high as most people <laughs> might assume, but incorrectly, yes. <laughs> incorrectly assume, but it's really just great for recovery where our bodies are being stimulated and just like, kind of like pummeled all day. <laughs> um, and sometimes it can be hard to just turn the switch off and like really recover and go to bed when it's time, which is the most frustrating thing. Like when you've worked so hard and you're so tired and then you're just laying in bed, like, please take me. Like I just need <laughs> sleep. I'm and ready. Can't. Let's go. And you're just like, yeah. why can I not wind down? I'm, I can't turn my brain off or I can't, you know, turn my, yeah. my body off. Um, and so just getting that help to be able to be like, it is bedtime and, and wind down. So they have a couple, like there's some drinks, there's some tap. Oh my God, Pi looks so cute right now. <laughs> there's some like pills. There's some like tinctures that yeah, you do topicals, under your tongue. Yeah. yeah, topicals that you can do roll on yeah. uh, for like, yeah, even if even if it's not um, for like sleep or relaxation, but for sore muscles, mm -hmm. yeah, it's good um, at, stiff uh, joints, inflammation, inflammation right. stuff like that. Um, there's a couple that are, I work with a company called Terra Vita and they have a couple that are, um, warming, like they have kept kept capsaicin, um, like a pepper, um, that okay. is warming kind of like uh, tiger balm with CBD in it. Um, and then they have like a cooling one that, you know, it's menthol and like kind of like icy mm -hmm. feeling. Um, so that would be like after, you know, after a run versus before. Um, yeah, sleep relaxation. Then they have like, um, energy focused ones too, that can help if you're, you know, yeah. trying to, um, think about writing questions for your next podcast and exactly. you really needed to focus. <laughs> so yeah, it pretty much covers all the bases and I, I tell people the big thing is, so right now you, um, are allowed to take CBD. You're allowed to, if you, if I get drug tested, I get drug tested randomly. So they mm -hmm. could come, mm -hmm. my window is like 6am. So they could come tomorrow at 6am. And if I tested positive for CBD, which I would, um, I would be fine. Um, I can also test positive right now at training camp for THC. 
which is the part of uh, weed that would get you high or yeah. part of, you know, the compound that would get you high. Um, and that would actually also be fine if I tested positive now. The only tricky part is if uh, I go to do a race on Saturday, mm -hmm. um, if I had taken something with THC in it on like Thursday mm -hmm. and then I raced on Saturday, if I were to get tested after the race and test positive for THC, that would not be okay. So then you have to wow. just be careful that either, either what you're using, you're confident that they've shown you their lab results, test results, that it's only CBD and no THC, mm -hmm. or that you're like, okay, I can take it because I'm at training camp for seven weeks, but then like the last couple weeks before a race, then, you know, you you're not it. doing it anymore. So it's right. like kind of up to you about what you're comfortable with. I just use the products that don't have THC in it because I just don't want to mess with it. Yeah, but, um, deal with it. Yeah. 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 That's pretty much the, oh, the sitch. Good, that's interesting. Actually, yeah. It's, yeah. it's actually something that I've been like curious to try for a little while. Yeah. And especially, yeah, like not even just for, for running, but yeah, laying awake at night, like thinking about work. COVID. About yeah. <laughs> COVID like, is your, anyone's excuse to be it, like, yeah. I need thinking about like de stressing. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, no, that politics. I think, yeah. Insurgency yeah. uh, at the Capitol. Anything here, so. could, yeah. <laughs> yeah, could make you want to take some CBD. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fabulous. I like it for sleep because it doesn't, it's not like a sleeping pill where it makes you like sleep for, like make you pass out for 12 hours. Yeah. Like, and then yeah. you can't wake up. Like, you, no one wants that either i'll have one of those <laughs> <laughs> My, yeah, I, I think if you take enough it probably would do that but if you just want to like you know you just want to sleep well but you also want to wake up and have a productive day the right. next day yeah. so you yeah. can have both yeah that's awesome. the spiel okay <laughs> should we go into some closing questions yeah let's do it cool. you right. have a much better memory than i do so you start I do too so we don't have our yeah we don't i kind of like this we were talking about our approach so typically because of covid we've mm. been on zoom with people and so we right. have our computers up but this is like a lot more free-flowing free-flowing like, like to it. not have a screen in front of us <laughs> telling us what to say so i like that but we'll just do some some rapid fire closing questions Sounds we'll just good. think of them we'll just alternate Cra and craig's not going to make us drink every time we ask a question oh, oh my time. god is that oh, you did man. yeah that's great oh, yeah. he was he was, you know, he's, he's a pusher, pusher. he's uh, a big yeah. pusher <laughs> peer, peer pressure you won't get that from me don't <laughs> oh, there's All a dog right. across the street. We can we can start <laughs> off. Uh, we'll start off easy. Okay. What is your favorite dessert? Oh gosh, a big dessert fan. Um, probably like. I don't know, like ice cream with like a brownie on top. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Combining two amazing things into one. Yeah. Yep. Like, like hot, hot brownie, cold ice cream. Yeah. Perfect. Mm. <laughs> favorite place you've lived and then favorite place you've traveled to. Oh, gosh. Favorite place I've lived, well, I've only lived in St. Louis where I grew up, Tallahassee where I went to school, and Portland where I live now. Um, I loved Tallahassee when I went to school there. So I don't know how to answer that because, like, I loved being in Tallahassee, but I would never live there now. Yeah. Um, because it's just, you just only live there when you're in school. <laughs> um, and I loved growing up in St. Louis, but I would never live there now. Um, so I guess, I guess Portland would have to be my favorite because, like, I could live there. You know, I'd long like term, to, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, it could be like a long term. I'm not sure that it will be, but like could be. I mean, like 167 days out of the year. Yeah, yeah. As long as I can get away. I feel like that number's right. If, I'll, I'll <laughs> put it in the show notes. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't have a good memory, but I can remember dumb shit. Like <laughs> yeah, that. dumb numbers. Yeah, so probably Portland. Wait, what's the best place you've traveled then? Oh, best place I've traveled, gosh. Definitely somewhere in Europe. Probably Switzerland. Switzerland yeah, is just answer. gorgeous <laughs> and like yeah. everything's perfect. The food is amazing. It's so clean. Like it's a very expensive place, but it's very nice. It's just nice. Yeah. There. It's very pristine. Yeah. Have everything yeah. about it. Yeah. 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 What's your uh, favorite like race or event or running mm. memory that, that you've had over your career? Oh, gosh. I mean, definitely the Olympic trials are always just stand out as like that's a moment, you know, you'll never forget, like going down the home stretch of Hayward Field and then someone hands you this like little American flag thing and you're like, yeah, I was like crying and hyperventilating. That was a great memory. But favorite races, too, just like in general, I really love doing Fifth Ave. I love New York City. That's probably one of my favorite places in the world, too, after Switzerland. Um, so every time I get to go back there, Fifth Ave is pretty special. Yeah. special. yeah. I've got one in the chamber, so hopefully you might only have one more, too. But uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like these people are making me. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. I don't think he wants to play. I don't think he wants to play right now. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Come here. Oh, Pi, thanks for the interruption because like now I, I remembered another question. It's like torture. Good. <laughs> Say it before you forget it. All right. Uh, yeah, next, so next question is, 
your favorite artist or genre of music that you're currently Ooh. listening to? Um, I'm really into India Re right now. It is random. I realize that, but like she just, I don't know. She's just speaking to me right now. Usually I would say Beyonce and she's Ooh, always good, a favorite, good answer. Yeah. but the last like week I've just been like binging India Re for some reason, speaking to my soul. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Um, all right. So an abstract one that we've been asking all of our guests. Okay. Uh, how many holes does a straw have? What? <laughs> And there's no right answer. It's just one hole. Okay. That, okay. okay. I mean, I need, it's a yeah. hole. A hole has two ends, but like it can, can have two ends, but it's a one hole. All right. I like it. Yeah. I like <laughs> it. It's like a no-brainer. It's straightforward. <laughs> straightforward. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, you'll have to go uh, into some of the other episodes. I'm to sure listen, other so. people have other. <laughs> yeah. people, yeah, people are all over. So I love that. <laughs> I've never been asked that before. I've I've only got the the final the closer question, so you can do one more. Go go for it if you want to go with it. All right. So my last question is: If you had one day left to live and money is no object, what would you do? Oh wow! We were just talking about this at dinner the other night. If you had, we were someone was talking about um, like billions of dollars, and so we went around the table and like, what would you if you had? billions of dollars not like not millions but billions with a b like what yeah, you would you do spend it yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, can't yeah. literally it's unlimited like what yeah. would you do <laughs> um and i just said i would just travel like mm -hmm. i just love i love traveling and travel can be really expensive yep. um one day though i feel like i'd have to pick one place to travel to which would be really hard but um Maybe, I mean, I'd probably go somewhere like beachy. Actually, what I have really wanted to do, I don't really know what they're called, but like it's those like little like floating house things where it's like kind of like a, um, like there's like a little boardwalk out there into the ocean. Yeah, and then you yeah. see these little pods, like little like li lily pad houses. Mm -hmm, definitely. Those look amazing and might be yeah. a post-Tokyo vacation um, treat a, for yeah, myself. There's a lot of good spots <laughs> in the Pacific Ocean for that. That just so. like yeah. looks like a fairy dreamland. So, I mean, that wouldn't be a bad place to spend your last day on Earth. That's excellent. Yeah. yeah. So, so not a, so travel by plane, not a travel by RV van life. Yeah, no, like no. That. I hate driving because it's uncomfortable. Cars are, it, make yeah, my back hurt and like, yeah, yeah, no, no. I, yeah. <laughs> Pri and if I had billions with a B, I'd be the private plane. That's, like It's my that's true. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, jet. yeah, exactly. True. You just got a living room that moves around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Private jet. <laughs> yeah. Like my own Air Force One would just be like, I could do whatever I wanted and I'd be going cool places. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else you want to plug? or say to the listeners or, or ask us to, to close it out. You guys were great. Thank you. I'm glad we got to uh, plug Fast Raid Friday. That was awesome. And I love that we got to bring in some um, male braider with Adam because people think it's only for girls, but, you know, Billy Seveco is my kind of only male Fast Break Friday proponent, and we need we need to get some more support from the other side of uh, the other gender. So I appreciate that. Give, give us a year, and we'll we'll get the hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Next give us time, a year. by yeah. the trials. We'll maybe. Get, yeah, we'll yeah. Get that's true. We, maybe by the trials, we'll be able to kind of get you know, shoulder length. And <laughs> some COVID flow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 some COVID flow. Yeah, missed our opportunity awesome. this last yeah, year. You guys are very enjoy. you know fresh and clean for COVID. You're looking. You're <laughs> not got, looking we, mangy we at all. These are self mastered self haircuts. Yeah, wow. It's easy. I mean, for a guy, you just kind of do. That's true. Clippers, that's so. that's true. <laughs> that's yeah. Well, you guys right. are awesome. Thanks we'll, we'll for having plug, me on. Uh, I your appreciate socials, it. Follow my favorite pie yeah, on my favorite Instagram. Pie has her own gram. Yes. She has her own voice. We've been doing the voice for for pie in the house and and Kevin and I with COVID. Um, we feel a little embarrassed that we, you know, it got a little out of hand with Pi's voice. Like we speak for her and yeah. she has her own voice. It's kind of embarrassing. That's very common though. And we, it is very common because yeah. dog people are freaking weird. And our, we started doing it when we were here with, with Gabrielle and Rowan and it took them about 12 hours before they started doing it too. So now the whole house is speaking yep. for Pi, which really helps when I'm trying to come up with Instagram captions. So <laughs> um, yeah, you should follow both of us. <laughs> yeah, listeners, check that out. <laughs> awesome. Well, Colleen, awesome. thanks for Thank coming on. Thank you guys. Appreciate Thank it. Glad you. you made out to flag. Enjoy your trip. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks again, everyone, for watching our interview with Colleen. We had a blast. Uh, hopefully she did too. I know for a fact that Pi had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely got a little distracted during the interview and might be covered in dog hair, but honestly, uh, kind of worth it. Yeah, no, that was absolute uh, 
awesome chance to meet her and Pi and uh, looking forward to seeing their progression, her progression in training. Well, Pi's progression too, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, shout out to Kevin, uh, Colleen's boyfriend for training Pi. Obviously a lot of work. She's uh, very well behaved. Yeah, if you wanna see more Pi uh, videos, pictures, link to that Instagram page there. Pi has her own. Also link to Colleen Quigley's socials in the descriptions. Make sure you follow along. Colleen posts a lot of great stuff on her socials, so definitely follow along with her. All right, so let's get into the beer of the week. We're trying, I, wait, is this this local? Barrio. Yeah, oh, it is. Well, it says local on the can, but like, how do they know where I'm located? How do they know it's local sure. to where I'm Well, it be <laughs> because they don't distribute it probably outside, oh, of, okay. outside okay. of Phoenix. Okay. Fair. Well, we're in Flagstaff, bud. Oh, all right. right, right. Uh, oh, it's in Tucson, Arizona. Okay, so different location, Tyler. Anyway, the beer of the week. You're, you you love our shenanigans and our ramblings. Uh, so it's, it's the Barrio. I don't know if it's supposed to be in Spanish like that. And that was kind of oh. weak. Did, okay. you, did uh, you study abroad in Spain? Oh, I didn't study abroad in Spain, no. Do you know how to I roll mean, your you know, R's? You know who can judge that is uh, Total Running Productions, Eunice and Andy. Tell me if that was a good R roll, the Barrio. Oh, man. I'd, anyway. give, it, I'd give it like a six out of 10. Okay, okay. Well, thank you. I, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, it's a blonde ale, so uh, what do you think? I'm trying to look, I was trying to look on here to see what that alcohol percent is. I don't see that, no IBUs either. So I didn't pay attention on the box. Probably about 5%-ish, plus or minus. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. IBUs are, I think are pretty low. Definitely it's low. It's a blonde ale. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? I think it's pretty good. I would say the X factor for this one is certainly that as we were buying Colleen and Pie's presents, uh, we were at Target. Target. Um, no, people know what Target. Is. Target. So we were at Target. We were like, okay, we want to buy some presents. We got to give the people what they want. We've been getting some great suggestions. Please keep sending those because we actually do use them. Yeah. We've got a few lined up, uh, but yeah, always appreciate those comments. So the X factor is definitely that this was bought off of like just a whim. We were in Target. Yep. We saw it on the rack, and we we're like, oh sure, let's get that. Yeah, we. We picked what looked, uh, well, we were looking looking for something local and then just picked what, you know, we, we're, we both like blonde ales. That's kind of a go-to for just a nice drinkable beer. So with that, the drinkability, uh, you know, it's it's not a not a uh, Miller High Life or a Budweiser drinkability level, uh, but it's up there, you know, good, a solid seven or eight. Right yeah, there. I'd give it a 7.8. Mm, 7.8, okay, yeah. okay. I don't, I don't know our official stance on the decimals, but we can talk about it later. Ah, so well, you know, there's no rules on this podcast, you know. <laughs> I think the people have learned that after the last one. So there are no rules. There's on no this rules, podcast. there's no format. There's no, yeah. <laughs> but we're versatile, you know. We right. can we can as we, we showed can, in today's episode, yeah. we have range. We have range. We can tip a few back with the boys, we can braid the ladies' hair, we can review beers, we can we can run the miles, you know, we can do it all, let's be honest. Um, so the taste, uh, you know, there, there's nothing, I guess, specific that stands out that makes this like, you know, the best right. there's nothing, I've ever there's had, nothing, but it's, it's solid. I wouldn't know? say there's anything special about it. It doesn't punch um, above its weight, but it, you right. know, it, it's a, it goes the but full hold, 12 rounds. It holds its own, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I'd give it a solid eight for taste. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, the seven to eight range is, is great. And also just tastes good because we're sitting out in nature, finally not, you know, recording the last couple of podcast episodes, sitting inside. Uh, it's just kind of, it's more of a buzzkill to do that. You know, it's great to still talk to people on Zoom, but at the same time, it's much more fun to obviously be around people in person. And then now that we can kind of record in a park and hopefully the audio sounds pretty good, Damn, we're up. We're it's it's up a level on the my desirability to also record more too. True. It's, this is a lot more fun to do. Well, and it's just so much easier. Like we don't have to worry that the sound's going to be crappy because the wind is blowing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we can go on hikes, and all we have to carry is the tripod. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Big big tip for if you want to have a podcast yourself. I mean, it's worth it to pay a few hundred bucks and get something that's solid equipment um, because then you're not fighting it in post production editing either. Like just. You know, pay the four or five hundred bucks, get yourself some good, good lovelier microphones, hand mics, whatever the case is. And um, anyway, I guess that's a good segue into uh, uh, plugging some other videos that yeah. we're turning out. You know, so so you got the the podcast episodes as we always do, but uh, also putting together, depending on when this podcast comes out, either you know slightly in the past or slightly in the future, some behind the scenes as well of uh, us and in recording with 
with uh, Craig and Eric, showing you, you know, some of Adam and I, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, not a day-to-day -day, day -to -day basis. We're sitting inside working on a computer, you know, <laughs> doing our doing our jobs. But uh, showing you a little bit of it behind the scenes, us going for runs, us hiking, us drinking some beers, us going to the casino. I mean, you some know. Some or a few. I think it's only a, it's, it's you know, some. You know, I've had, I might have finished a six pack on this uh, this Arizona trip here. So that's, uh, maybe six that's beers. A, that's a maybe few. Six beers. Yeah, yeah, a few, a few. Yeah. But anyway, subscribe to Beer Mile Media on YouTube and let us know what you think about the kind of the, the vlog style, the Beer Mile Media off air type type videos as well. And if you like them, we'll keep doing them. They're fun to do. And it's, it's not too hard either because we can just kind of take footage throughout the day. Cause that's actually what we would be doing yeah, anyway. Right. Um, it's not like we're taking footage of things that we wouldn't be doing. So, um, so yeah, let us know if you like those. And then also, as I just mentioned, the setup and investing in some microphones, I'll, I'll post a video um, because we've gotten some questions on just what our audio equipment is. Just a short little video showing what our setup is. So if you want to start a podcast, take your, take your podcast mobile, uh, that video will be coming out soon as well. Any words of wisdom for the listeners this week? Oh man. Well, I don't know how to say this concisely, but the first thing that comes to mind is just, uh, oh, here it is. Now, you know what, is it gonna get a little touchy-feely here? Oh, um, yikes. Be persistent, right? Like, did you think when we started this podcast three months ago, we'd be, uh, you know, tipping some back with Craig and Eric? And no. then And then meeting Colleen and Pi in person and, be persistent, you know? You, what you don't see are the 20 strikeouts that we had in DMs. 20. Oh, 20 I know plus. What, I don't know what your DMs look like, but I've got about 100. Yeah, you don't see the strikeouts that it took to get to get to these uh, home runs, uh, but <laughs> but they're there. And so, yeah, Definitely. I mean, anything you want to do, be persistent. And if you you know truly enjoy doing it, just just do it, because it's fun to, it's fun to talk to these people. Like I would, I would just love hanging out with all these people without, you know, yeah, without film, the camera. No without, film, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So that's my word of words of wisdom for the week. Be persistent. If you want to do something, no excuses. Just, just get her done. Um, and that's also like a little call out to uh, all those unread, unopened on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> your boy Chris Robertson Ten's been reaching out. Um, <laughs> you know who you are. I mean, I, I don't even want to say the list because it's uh, I, we, it's kind of embarrassingly long. My phone point. would my phone would run out of memory before oh, we got gosh, through the list. Gosh. So you know who you are. Actually, they don't know who they are probably because it's unopened. <laughs> but <laughs> but if you're a pro runner and you're listening to this, check your DMs. You probably have you one. Probably from have you probably have a message from both of us. You probably have one from your boys. So uh, yeah. So that that's one last call out to the fans. I don't want to call you fans. One last call out to the community of people that we would love to run some miles with and drink some beers with. Uh, if you happen to know someone that would be great for the podcast, um, you know, pro runner or just someone else that's interesting and you actually know them well enough to make an introduction, that would be awesome. Yeah, hook us up, we'll give you some swag. Yep, yep. Maybe some Bitcoin, I don't Yeah, know. It's, like a, it's like when you work somewhere and you get a- It's a, a referral, referral bonus. Fee, a yeah, referral yeah. bonus if you refer an employee. Sure. If you refer someone who actually comes on, yeah, definitely, swag coming your way. So, and for a sure. shout out and whatever else you, well, not whatever else you want, I should probably just cap it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Cap it a little earlier than that. Um, but thank you all for tuning in. Uh, Beer Mile Media on YouTube for the video version. Especially, I mean, if you would listen to the audio version of this one, you're missing out because Pi, Pi was front and center. Oh. Um, so make sure Beer Mile Media on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment. It actually does a lot uh, for us to grow and bring on more guests. Subscribe on the audio platform of your choice. Leave us a voice message on Anchor. Um, Mostly just subscribe though. Mostly subscribe. YouTube, I think YouTube is going to be our main uh, main channel going forward. Uh, so yeah, please subscribe on YouTube. If you're going to do one thing, subscribe on YouTube and then tell all your friends how awesome our podcast is. <laughs> Those are the, the two things, I guess, the two things to do. Cool. Have a good one, everyone. See you in the next episode.